Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com, and yes, back to our Monday hotel room post-road trip videos where we give you the latest on the Bengals regardless of whether we're traveling or not, and hey, this brick wall works out. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell because you got exclusive coverage of the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday before the game, after the game, that you're not getting anywhere else. And let's dive into what Zach Taylor said at Paycor Stadium on Monday, the latest injury update, starting with Logan Wilson. We saw him. It was kind of scary, that right shoulder, that surgically repaired right shoulder. And he left the game, was able to leave on his own power. But the Bengals are hopeful that Logan Wilson is going to be week to week, hopeful. And he's still got to undergo more tests on Tuesday, Wednesday. And so the Bengals uh, expecting to know more by Zach Taylor's weekly Wednesday press conference. So we should know more later in the week. And hopefully that hopeful becomes a reality. Regardless, it sounds like Logan Wilson set to miss multiple games. And if that's the case, then you're going to see Jermaine Pratt with the headset like you did towards the end of yesterday's game. He'll make the calls and everything for the defense uh, from that linebacker spot. And then we'll see more Akeem Davis-Gaither. We'll see more, uh, you know, of Marcus Bailey. And, and who knows? I know Joe Bacci's uh, – Joe Bacci, excuse me, has been working really, really hard to come off of injured reserve. Maybe that's the route they go if they do need a linebacker. Hopefully not. Hopefully Logan only misses a game or two and can come back. But it doesn't sound like he's going to, uh, you know, be able to play through this. It sounds like it's going to be a week-to-week -week injury. Other guys that are uh, worth mentioning where they got – dinged up and injured on Sunday. Josh Tupo expected to miss multiple games, had his foot in a boot, according to, to Ben Baby, who was in the locker room on Monday. And so it's unfortunate because, you know, he's dealing with a, a calf injury that he suffered in Sunday's game. The good news is, if there is good news, is Jay Tufele came in and played pretty well. B.J. Hill showed he could take a full allotment of snaps and make a, a game-changing play late in the game, and that's what he did after playing 70-plus snaps. So we'll see. What happens there, uh, you know, at the defensive tackle spot? Do they bring someone back? I will say this. It does feel like DJ Reader is progressing the right way. Uh, I don't think he's there yet by any stretch, uh, but he, he's certainly eligible uh, to come back after the Atlanta game for that Halloween matchup against the Browns. Who knows? Maybe he could come off of injured reserve then and give the Bengals' run defense a much-needed boost. Other notes uh, worth mentioning, T. Higgins, Jonah Williams. We knew about both of those guys' injuries going into Sunday's matchup. Both of them are sore, according to Zach Taylor. But it sounds like they're not you know, worse for wear following the game, which is really good news considering the amount of snaps T played, the amount of snaps Jonah played. Jonah coming back from that dislocated kneecap didn't really miss much time. You know, uh, Last week played through it. This week was able to play every snap and really just missed a couple of practices. T Higgins didn't really get to play much in week five because of that ankle sprain. Looked better this week. Hopefully they can get him some rest, recovery, and he can be even healthier in week seven on Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. And then the really weird and unique injury that kind of went under the radar, we wrote about it for allbengals.com, but I didn't even get to cover it in the post game. was Jeff Gunter. And Jeff Gunter suffered a dislocated kneecap in pregame warmups. The rookie seventh rounder uh, was active, was going to play, and is primarily a special teamer, but has gotten a few snaps on defense this year and didn't get a snap at all yesterday because of his injury and warm-ups, had to be carted off. Really, really unfortunate. Zach Taylor did say he was weak to weak as well. So it doesn't sound like he's going to miss a ton of time. And if he does, if they decide to go the injured reserve route, or at least they kept Khalid Kareem on the practice squad. So there's a lot of things that could happen here. I, I think most of these holes could be filled internally with guys they have either on the practice squad or on the current roster. The one to look at is that defensive tackle position because Reader can't return this week, and they may say, let's find someone else, and that could be Tyler Shelvin or that could be someone else from the outside depending on what happens, and then you just fingers crossed that Logan Wilson's shoulder injury is a week-to-week -week thing and not more long-term than that. So, look, that's part of it. The Bengals, they've been dealing with their in injuries now for the past couple of weeks. We'll continue to keep you up to date on the latest injury news regardless of we're still in New Orleans at a hotel or if we're back in Cincinnati covering your Cincinnati Bengals. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and check out our postgame stand-up. What Joe Burrow had to say, what Jamar Chase had to say, what Zach Taylor had to say after a fun, thrilling, nail-biting, crazy 30-26 to win in the Big Easy. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Rapine signing off for now on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.